Well, let me tell you who Jesus is. He's the rock of all ages. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the way, the truth, and the light. He's the beginning and the end. He's much more than this, my friend. He's the Son of Man. He's coming back again. Father, I believe in the Son, I believe in the Holy Ghost, and all these three in one, well let me tell you who Jesus is, He's the rock of all ages, He's the Alpha and the Omega, He's the way, the truth, and the light, He's the beginning. Son of man, he's coming back again. Well, I believe in the Father, I believe in the Son, I believe in the Holy Ghost, and all these three in one. Well, let me tell you who Jesus is. He's a rock of all ages. truth and the light is the beginning and the end it's much more than this my friend he's the son of man he's coming back again something going on in the ground see how we get bossed around all the time he tells us what to say a man was being buried, placed in another's grave. The men in charge saw the enemy, they quickly ran away. They threw the body in the ground, touched Eliza's bone. The dead man rose up with a shout, great God, what's going on? Well, there's something going on in the graveyard like you ain't ever seen.
at your neighbor there beside of you, behind you, around you. All right. Yeah. You guys are good greeters. All right. I didn't tell you to sit down, but I guess you went ahead anyway, huh? Amen. We're going to have prayer, but before we do, you don't have to get up. Before we do, uh, who's got a scripture tonight? If you're visiting here tonight, I've been challenging our folks this in, in this year uh, to memorize Scripture and uh, study the Word of God and uh, make the Bible a place in their hearts. And it's been going really good. And they've been, man, I'm telling you, they've been very fascinating in, in the stuff that they've memorized. So who's got one tonight? Let's go. Who's got one? Page for... you have... We'll, we'll come back, back to you. Take five. All right, come on. I've been thinking about this today. We've been a lot of talk and a lot of change in the church lately about the prophecies that have come to pass before our very eyes. And in Luke chapter 21, the disciples are asking Jesus about how will we know when the end days are here. And he's cautioning them to not follow those who come and say, I am the Christ, but false prophets. But then he leads them through various signs that, that, that as to how they'll tell that the end days are here. Then verses 27 and 28, <coughs> what we're waiting for, he says, So then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with great power and glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, lift up your heads, look up and lift up your heads for your redemption God and God. Amen. Where's that found? Okay. All right. Who else got one? Okay. Mm-hmm. Great ship. Uh, return to uh, you. You know, get a crown. And you'll be armed for us. With uh, glory in the glory and honor. First, first Peter 5 4. Right. Huh? That's all right. Keep working at it. You'll finally get it. Believe me, I'm telling you. You got one? Psalm 34 4. I sought the Lord, and he delivered from all my goodness. Amen. All right. And you got a scripture memorized? 35, Jesus wept. <laughs> you're like some of these over here. That's what you're like. Uh-huh. All right. Anybody else got one? Thomas, what do you got? See, I got something for that you little guy. Amen. Yeah, you go shut that. Go ahead and get that for me, will you? Everybody, come here. Come here. Get you some ice cream cones, son. There you go. Amen. All right. Who else? Anybody else? That's all right. You want to come up here then? No. All right. What we got? But let no one, but let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. God cannot be tempted by evil. Neither does he himself tempt anyone. Uh, Don't look at them. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, maybe that's as far as I can go with it tonight. But I know a few more. But I. I Where's that at? Um, uh, James one twelve through fifteen. I just didn't get all the way. That's through. good. You're doing good, bud. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Who else got one? Who else? Come on. You got one, Tammy? You got to be loud so we can hear you. But at the name of Jesus, every, every knee should bow, of things in heaven, of things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory, to the glory of God the Father, Philippians Chapter 2, verse 10. Amen. All right. Woohoo. All right. Who else got one? 
Luke 19, yeah. verse 40. Okay. And he answered them, saying, And he answered and said unto them, I tell you, if these be silent, the rocks will cry out immediately. Amen. Amen. We ain't going to be silent, are we? Amen. That's right. Amen. All right. Who else got one? Yeah, you got one? All right. Okay. Woohoo. Who else? Anybody else? All right, then. You done? You ain't got one, Cheryl? That's why it's come on, did it? And all I want to do it so I do it right. All right, let's go. <laughs> okay. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which I get my help. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He, behold, he who keeps Israel will not slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. He is the shade at your right hand. The sun will not come, boy. That's all right. Yeah, you're doing good. Keep at it. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from all evil. The Lord will preserve you, your soul. The Lord will preserve your going out and your coming in. From now, from now, from this time forth. And even forevermore. Amen. Psalm 121. Amen. 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 Awesome. Way to go. Anybody else? Thanks, what? I think I can finish that. Finish what? <laughs> okay. But every man is uh, drawn away when he is no, every man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and his eyes. Uh, can I see? <laughs> <laughs> uh, then when desire has been conceived, it gives birth to sin, and when sin is full grown, it brings forth death. Amen. Okay. 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 You got one, Jack? All right, what is it? You cannot live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from God. Matthew 4 4. You got one, Fred? Psalms 33. Blessed is his nation, whose God is the Lord, and the people that he has chosen for his own inheritance. Amen. Don, you got one? Uh, speaking of Jesus coming to earth, that the scripture says that he came into his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of God. Amen. 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 All right. Okay, we're going to have prayer. We want to call out uh, Heidi Boggs. Her, her mother is down with cancer, and they uh, called uh, this evening and asked that we lift her up in prayer. So we want to lift her up in prayer. We want to lift up Rick Mullins in prayer. He's, uh, they said that he really needed prayer. And uh, he's fighting cancer. And uh, be with the family and the children. Young man. Is he 36? 38. You know, young man fighting cancer. But we know who's able and is above cancer. Amen? And so also we want to remember... Uh, uh, D Dale King, lift him up in prayer. Sean Emery, Jane Ann McNeil, and uh, Reese Albright, lift her up. Anybody else? You got, yes. Yeah, I heard that. Amen. Amen. Want to remember Mary? Lift her up in prayer. She's suffering some blood clot. Pardon? Yes, and they moved her surgery, Christy Stennett's surgery, to 6.30 in the morning, okay, which is a good thing. So 
remember Christy. All right? Okay? Okay? Little Lambs, yes. And somebody Alan else. Reach. Alan Reach. Yes, Alan Reach. Amen. Yeah. Who? Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Could be something to do with prayer, maybe. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And also, Bill Femister. I want to lift him up and pray for him. All right. And also, Carrie uh, Wynn. Lift her up. Yeah. Oh, so many. All right. Let's have prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. And God, we just welcome you into our service tonight. And we just pray that heaven will come down and glory fill our soul. We pray for each name that was called out tonight, that God, you'll wrap your loving arms around them. That God, you'll touch them and let them feel your presence. I just pray and know the power of prayer. And I know prayer changes things. There's courage and strength and peace in prayer. And I pray that they'll be overwhelmed with your presence and with your healing touch, God. Please be with them. Put a hedge around them. Through faith, we plead the blood of Jesus over them mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. And we pray someone might be grossly healed tonight or grossly saved. We pray that you anoint Curtis tonight in a mighty way. Anoint the special singing tonight, God, the, the band. And we just pray. We come to worship you tonight. And God, you're awesome and you're worthy. And there's no name above the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for this time of the year. Glory. It's been good. And we're expecting great things. And we just give you praise. And we all said, Amen. Amen. All right. We need a little choir. So if you want to come up, stand up here. Plenty of room. We'd love to have you. Okay. Let's go. Come on. You got to hustle. We got to be out of here by eight. Let's go. Come on. We need some help. Who's coming tonight? Come and help us. Y'all been touched, haven't you? You got something to sing about. Surely you got something to sing about. Been saved. Been forgiven. Breathing. Golly. Been, been forgiven. Woohoo! Look at this group of kids. Hallelujah. Man. All right. Hey, hey. Hey, man. All right. 212. There's a happy land of promise over in the grave beyond. Sister, brother, will be staying around the room in that land where no one ever knows again. And the prisoners of all age will join in a triumph song. Everybody will be happy over there. Well, everybody will be happy. 
321. He set me free. 321. Yeah. Don't we sing that? have you all tonight. Praise the Lord. Where are you all from tonight? Amen. You ready to praise the Lord? You come up to sing? Huh? You go sing? Okay. Once like a bird in a Curtis Smith tonight from 
Hazeldale Free Will Baptist Church up at Cesar. Praise God. Glad to have you, buddy. Amen. So, now. Is with me, joking. We need this. Uh, oh, we're hey, here. Caleb, we need that. Thing. Oh, with the with the train thing? That was that was cool. <laughs> I'm I'm easily amused. Um, uh, anyways. <laughs> you got your mic on. Hey, it's all right to be amused in the house of the Lord. Amen. All right. Um, before I start preaching, uh, we got. Uh, it used to be called the Ezra Drama Team, all right? And uh, But uh, my, my sister-in-law, Julie, and my cousin-in-law, Kiera, they've started their own uh, drama team. And so they're going to do a skit, but they've also brought my wife along and Brandon along. It's going to help them out. Now, they've been uh, traveling around the different churches and different things, and they are such a blessing. I know that uh, they, our, our church, uh, can I brag a little bit? Our church was the first church they came and performed in, and they did fantastic uh, but you gotta you gotta stay on your toes though, or they'll call you out and you know and embarrass you in different things. But anyways, they do a fantastic job, and uh, they do such a wonderful job of uh, you know promoting Jesus and sharing the love of Jesus uh, through skits. Okay, and so they're going to come up and do a skit after they're done. My song leader, Hazeldale Caleb Miller, he's going to come up and sing a special, and then we'll we'll see what happens after that. Okay, all right, all right, guys, you want to come up? And- But that's what revival's for. It's to revive our souls, amen? We're supposed to be happy. We're supposed to be on fire for God and just experience all the things he has in store. That's right. Okay, I don't know if anyone else here has, but I have one time or two have walked into a dead church. I don't know if you've walked into a dead church before, but when you walk into a dead church, there's not much shouting. There's not much praise in the Lord. You sit in a church where it looks like it's just filled with zombies. That's what it looks like. And we invite people, oh, come on out to our church. But if you invite someone to a dead church, do you really think they're going to want to come back? They're going to think this is what Christianity looks like. They're going to think, oh, it's boring and it's sad. It's depressing. I don't know about you guys, but I know I get excited when I think about the God I serve. Who He he can heal the sick people. You know, he can mend broken families. I serve the same God that died on a cross and rose again. And that makes me excited. Amen? Amen. So that's kind of what our skit talks about. And like Curtis said, we have two friends that have come out to decide to help us. So Miss Emily and Brandon, they're making their way up. So our skit's kind of about that, the importance of revival, the importance of being an on-fire Christian. And it's kind of a funny skit, so feel free to laugh. It's all right. right. Um, But it does have a really great message to it. So this skit is called The Unlikely Revival. can my church be something like this? Well, let me tell you, we didn't always used to be like this. No, we used to be dead. Deader than dead. Dead as a doornail. Deader than a raw slab of meat. But something happened. 
the most unlikeliest thing you could ever imagine. The 40! The 30! The 20! The 10! Bumble! Wait! Bumble? Come on, Winston! You're supposed to hold the ball! What are you doing? Julie! What, Mom? Time to get ready for church! Mom, I don't want to go to church! It's dry and boring there! church. It's dry and boring there. And I'm gonna miss the whole second half of the game. I know. I could take my phone and my AirPods and listen to the game at church. No one would even know the difference. Me and the New Orleans Saints have a date with the destiny tonight, and I'm gonna be their waiter. Hmm. Genius. Nay, girl, with her AirPods, her phone, and a silly football game, have anything to do with this revival? Well, let's go back to the church and find out, shall we? <gasps> good morning, Tiara. Welcome to church. It's so good to see you again. Yeah, great to see you too, Pastor. Great to see you too, Tiara. <laughs> Julie, Ju Julie, Julie, isn't there a football game going on? What are you doing here? Yes, there's a football game, Pastor, but sometimes you have to make compromises. Huh? I mean, sacrifices. Sacrifices, sacrifices. yes. yes. <laughs> so good to see you can have your seat over here. And uh, I think that is everyone. Let me see here. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Three, two, one. Emily, Emily, I'm just glad that you are here today for church. You know, I thought we would start off with a little song and worship and lift our voices to God. You know why? Because we've got the joy, 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 joy down in our heart. Where? Where? I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Tuesday. Let's just go right into our scripture reading this morning, shall we? I've got a great one, so listen carefully. Psalms 47 and verse 1. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. You know what, we're, we're going to go right into our sermon today. As you know, it is the beginning of football season. And to celebrate this momentous occasion, the object of this sermon is all based around the theme of football. here today on this field of life, or as I like to call it, church, <laughs> uh, God has given each of us a call, and we must carry that call, get it, carry the ball, call, get it, we get it, okay, all right, all right, we must go forth and... and preach it because, because we are his saints. And because we are his saints, we must. Yes, yes. And we are all on a team. Saints is plural, which means we need to work together. There is no I in team. Yes, 
We must work together because, because, because the great tempter is out there. He wants to see us trip. He wants to see us fall and crumble. He wants to see us fumble, but God will not let that happen. He wants to use each and every one of you. It doesn't matter if you're 40. If you're 30, if you're 20, even if you're 10 years old, we all strive for that final goal. Touchdown! Hallelujah! Praise God! Praise Jesus! Amen! Praise God! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! to remember one thing, that everybody has a calling, and that calling isn't going to take itself to the end zone. Somebody has to carry it, and that somebody is you. Because a revival like this is good. good. I think it's on. There it is. There it is. All right. I tell you what, that was good. There's nothing wrong with having a little bit of fun in church, laughing a little bit. Church is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be somewhere we come to have a lot of fun and enjoy ourselves and with other Christians and enjoy ourselves. I mean, like they said, you go to a dead church, and the Bible talks about it in Revelation, it's talking about not being lukewarm or not being hot or cold. You were lukewarm, so I spit you out of your spit you out of my mouth. Uh as a church, we can't be lukewarm. We've got to be hot. God would rather us be hot or cold. Doesn't matter. Um, so I want you guys, Curtis asked me to sing this song tonight. Um, I'm going to be honest. It, it's called All My Hope. It's a David Crowder song. I have not once made it through this song without feeling so overwhelmed with joy because of what God has done in my life. The song talks about the hope that we have in Jesus and everything that he has done. Um, breaking us down into nothing and I know I can just remember you know a few short years ago uh, where God had uh, well not where God had pushed where I had pushed myself to in my life and God broke me and round about that time this song came out and I sing this song and as I sing it those thoughts come through my head of where I've been I'm just I'm so thankful that God didn't leave me there I put my hope in him and he took me where I needed to go and he's where I'm at and where I'm at now is all because of him so I want you guys to pray for me while I sing this song. I uh, hope it touches you guys. And uh, don't be afraid to shout and sing with me and whatever you want to do. Uh, I'd, I'd love to hear it. I've been held by a Savior. I felt fire from above. I've been down to the river. I ain't the same, a prodigal return. shackles and chains but I've been freed and forgiven yes I've 
yes I have I'm not going back I'll never be the same that's why I sing and all my hope is in Jesus thank God my yesterday is gone but all my sins are forgiven that I've been washed by the blood there's a kind of thing that just breaks a man breaks him down to his knees God I've been broken more than a time or two yes Lord then he picked me up and showed me what it means to be a man that's why i sing all my hope is in jesus but thank god my yesterday is gone but all my sins are forgiven that i've been washed by the blood sing that with me and all my hope is in jesus thank god my yesterday is gone and all my sins are forgiven and I by the blood. Man. Woo! Yeah! God's good, is he not? Woo! We serve the risen Savior, Brother Andy. Did you know that? Man, get up and shout or something, man. Woo! There you go. All right. Praise the Lord. You sang all right, Brother Caleb. You did all right. Good job, man. I tell you what, Brother... Uh, Brother Kevin said I could preach as long as I wanted, so I brought me a whole bag of cough drops. And he got me some water. Who knows how long we'll be here, all right? If you'd have your Bibles, turn to 2 Timothy. Man, good night. We've had a good, good night in the Lord already, amen? Man, it's so exciting. I tell you what, though, Brother Kevin called me a couple weeks ago, and he says, um, he said, those two girls that do, the, uh, that do the skits. And I said, yeah. And he said, do you think they could come and do part of the revival service for us. I said, yeah. And then we got to talking. And then he finally, at the end of the call, asked me if I wanted to preach. And I'm like, come on, dude. You know, but anyways, it's good to be with you this, this evening. And uh, we're going to talk about the wood stove this, uh, this evening. The wood stove, not the wood shed, right? That's a different sermon for a different time. But we're going to talk about the wood stove uh, here this evening. If you have your Bibles, again, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 1 says, Paul... An apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my but dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day." He also says, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us, listen, the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us, amen, and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Let's pray. 
Dear Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much, God, for the anointing of your Holy Spirit already, Lord. And I just thank you so much, Lord, for this church and what it means, Lord, to our community, Lord. And we just thank you so much for Brother Kevin, Lord, and his pastor here. And I just pray, Lord Jesus, that this revival, Lord, that that maybe is just set here for this week, Lord, would, would continue not only in this church, Lord, throughout the remainder of the year and into next year and the year after, Lord, and as long as it takes to your return, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that it also would, would be a revival for each and every church represented here, Lord, and all the pastors, Lord, that are here. I pray, God, you just fill them up with your Holy Spirit, God, and use this time of revival, Lord, for us, your, your workmen, Lord Jesus, and give us fruits for the labor, Lord. And I pray, God, that you to uh, right here this evening, Lord, that you'd anoint us with your Holy Spirit and speak to us in a mighty way, Lord. And if there's someone in this place that does not know you as their personal Savior, I pray that today would be the day that they'd be convinced, Lord, that they need a Savior in their life, Lord. Lord, we love you and we thank you. And all these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Man, Paul here is writing to Timothy from prison in Rome. Timothy is struggling. He is struggling in life. He's struggling with his ministry. Paul, again, in prison, writes to Timothy to try to encourage him to be the servant that God has called him to be. Right? And he sees him struggling there. Anybody struggling with life right now? Anybody here? Anybody uh, been, been, been through anything in the last couple of years? Man, we, we live in a society that is gripped with struggle, right? They are gripped with fear. And Paul is trying to tell Timothy here, he says, hey, in verse number two, hey, that you would have experience and remember God's grace, mercy, and peace. I think sometimes we as God's people need to be reminded that we are saved children of God by the grace of God, right? That we also have the mercy of God. And His mercies are not dead. They don't die tonight. They renew morning by morning, right? And He's also a God that brings me peace. And the peace in the midst of my trials, in the midst of my troubles, in the midst of my circumstances, in the midst of the sicknesses that may go on in my life, in the struggles of life, in the struggles of ministry, God is still there to bring us peace. Amen. He doesn't stop there with Timothy. He also tells Timothy there in verse number 3, he says, Timothy, I'm always praying for you. Woo! Man, anybody here need prayer? Amen? I know I do. I covet your prayers. Man, someone's been praying for me tonight, and I thank you, man. I I just tell you what. But listen, we all need prayer, right? I I love it that you guys, whenever we had prayer request time, everybody started lifting up prayer requests. I tell you what, sometimes... That's right, Brother Caleb. Sometimes in my church, I have to write the prayer list down because no one wants to say anything. I mean, that's not what we're supposed to be about. If there's a burden on our heart, we need to lift it up. Why? So that our brothers and sisters in Christ can pray with us and for us and carry us through if need be because we need prayer, right? You want a great revival? You need to make sure that your churches are praying, that your children are praying, that your spouses are praying, that your pastors are praying, that your deacons, man, those deacons, and those deacons, Deacons are praying, right? The Sunday school teachers are praying. We need people starting praying for true revival to break out. Amen. He doesn't stop there either. He also tells him in verse number five, he says, Timothy, I know that you're struggling, but Timothy, remember where your faith came from. He says, "I, I recall, Timothy, that your grandmother and your mother both were pretty faithful people. Remember that faith. Listen, friend. If you're here tonight, you need to make sure that you are setting a godly example for the next generation. You may not have kids yourself, but kids are looking to you, right? If we are part of the family of God, every one of us in this place has a responsibility to set a good example of faith to the next generation. And he's trying to tell Timothy here, Timothy, you need to remember the faith that has saved you, the faith that was in your family, and you need to make sure, Timothy, that you're setting a good example of faith to those that you're pastoring as well. He doesn't stop there either. He also tells him in verse number 7, he tells Timothy to not let the spirit of fear consume his life. Amen. Hey, I don't care how much fear you got in your life. You should not let fear grip your life and take hold of your life and control your life. Why? Man, and listen, I'm I'm not discounting anything, man. Life is scary. Amen. You turn, I don't even watch the news anymore. Why? Because I, man, I get... I get downright mad at the world, way our world is going 
and, and it's not healthy for me, right? Spiritually, I don't even watch the news. I have no idea what's going on in the world, and I'm at more at peace about that than the, anything in the world, right? Why? Because I, the world wants you to live in fear. It wants to control you with fear. And Paul is telling Timothy, don't let fear control you. Don't let fear control your life. Don't let fear control your ministry. God, God has given you the spirit of power. Power of what? Power of the Holy Spirit. Man, if you have not felt the power of the Holy Spirit here tonight, your wood is wet. And we're going to get to that in just a minute. Listen, you need to let go and let God have his way. And maybe your anointing of the Holy Spirit might change somebody else's life as well. Amen. Man, it's time that we as a church start letting the Holy Ghost give us the power from Almighty God to do God's work, be God's witness, and allow the power to penetrate the hearts and minds and souls of people so we can see people saved. Amen. Woo, it's getting hot in here. I'm going to take my jacket off. Is that all right? I don't care if it's all right or not. I'm going to do it. Is that okay? Woo, all right. Let's see. Let's see what he says. Proverbs 29, verse 25 says, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be what? Oh, man, y'all is learning verses and you don't know that? Safe. Safe, right? So he tells Timothy, he says, Don't be gripped with fear. Allow the power of God to anoint you. Allow the Holy Spirit to anoint you. And then he tells him, Hey, you also need to be loving. Remember the love that God had demonstrated to you through the death, burial, and resurrection of His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, this Sunday we're getting ready to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, that should be the most exciting day of the whole year for the church. Our churches should be packed, right? And they may be packed with some people. That's the only time they step forth. Going back to that skit, you know what we need as God's people need to do? We need to make sure that we're showing the same power, love, peace, excitement that God gives us each and every day so we can show those people that, hey, there's something special about being a child of God. He also tells him there in verse number 7, he says, not only do you need to allow God to fill you with the spirit of power, the spirit of love, but he also says a sound mind, right? In other words, you need to make sure you're allowing the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom to make sound decisions in the world that you live. Man, the world is going to try to pull you away, try to deceive you, try to trick you into doing things that are against God. And man, listen, man, sometimes the birds and bees knows better than us humans, right? But that's because we haven't allowed the God of the universe to give us a sound mind. And listen, God's people need to stand up and stand for what is right for what is truthful and what God has to say about it. Verse number 6 then, Paul tells Timothy how to keep that spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And he tells him there that he needs to make sure that he is stirring up the gift of God. Let's look at verse 6 there. Again, he says, Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou shalt stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Now, the thing about that is that little phrase there, stir up. That phrase there, stir up, in the Greek, and I'm going to butcher this, okay? So just go with me. But in the Greek, uh, please forgive me, it is anapurio or something like that. It starts with an A, and it's a big, long thing, all right? And it says what that word means is, is rekindle the fire. It's the only time that Greek word is used in all the, uh, all the New Testament. And what Paul is telling him, Timothy, for you to have the, the, the spirit of power and, and, of, and of love and of sound mind, you need to rekindle the fire in your life. Remember what Jesus told us. Jesus told us in the Word of God that He was going to baptize us with Holy Ghost and what? Fire, right? In other words, man, Brother Kevin, last night, it was funny. I don't see Brother Dink here, but I saw, I had a funeral today, and Brother Dink Phelps was here last night. And he said, he said last night, he said, I almost bought, because Brother Kevin said, hey, does anybody want to get baptized? They have the water all filled. It's all, I don't know if it's warm or not. I was going to check it, but it's all, I'll trust you. But anyways, he said, that I almost volunteered to go get baptized just so we could go home, right? But anyway, that's not what he's talking about here. What he's talking about here is that he's going to fill us up with a fire that Jeremiah says, a fire that is within my bones so hot that I cannot, what, contain it. We have a 
have a lot of people in churches that may, maybe not you crowd because many of y'all is getting into it tonight, but there's a lot of churches that people come in, they sit down and they're like, like the dead church, amen. You wouldn't know if Jesus has been there in a million years, right? Man, I tell you what, whenever I started preaching, I wasn't pastoring yet, but people would call me up. Hey, there's a new preacher, and, you know, this answer the call to preach. And so everybody that has a dead church wants you to come and preach, right? And so, so you come, and you go, and you preach, you know, and you're like, man, man, I tell you what, that's a good way to break in a preacher because if they can withstand a dead church, they're going to be all right. <laughs> right? And so they go, you know, and, and they're just deader in a doornail. I'm sorry, I've used your, your, used your line, but it's, it's the truth, right? But God has told us that we need to make sure that we are full with that fire, fire of the Holy Ghost, fire of the Spirit of God, fire of their uh, 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 power and of love and of a sound mind to share that the, to the world that there is hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. All my hope is in Jesus. Hopefully your hope is in Jesus. Amen. Anybody ever have a wood stove? Anybody ever have a wood stove growing up? Anybody? Whenever I was growing up, my mom uh, and I lived with my grandma and grandpa. My grandma and grandpa uh, had a uh, had an old wood st wood stove there to heat the house. My grandpa worked at the stove foundry up there in, in Mount Vernon, so he probably got a good deal. So we had a warm morning wood stove. And that's what it was called. It was the Vernoy's company up there in Mount Vernon. It was a warm morning wood stove. And uh, they had that there. And, and there's nothing like a good warm wood fire to warm you up right in the morning. That there's a, a couple of things about that. For you to have a good fire, you have to make sure that the fire is kindled up, right? Sometimes we have to rekindle our fire. And so we're going to look at a wood stove here and see what it means and how we can keep the Spirit of God burning within our souls in the world, the crazy world that we live in today. Because we are to be what? Lights in the darkness, right? And for me to be a light, I need to make sure that I have a fire burning within me that is oozing out of me, that is showing the world that, again, there is hope. So let's look at these things. The first thing is, for me to have a good fire burning within my soul, I need to make sure the fire is started, right? That's pretty obvious, Brother Curtis. You have to have a fire started, but man, I'm looking out, and some people don't have the fire started to begin with. Now, they may act like they have a fire started, right? But they don't have the light burning very bright, right? So we need to make sure that we have a fire started in our life. In other words, spiritually speaking, I need to make sure that I am saved. Amen? For me to have a fire in my life that draws others to Jesus, for me to have good revival services, I need to make sure that the fire first is started within me. For me to spark anybody else's fire around me, I need to make sure that my wood is not wet and my fire is started. Amen? So I need to make sure that I have my fire started. That is the shortest point right there, okay? The rest of them are long, I'm sorry. But that one there is short. I need to make sure that my fire is started. I need to make sure that I am saved, right? And if I want to have revival in my church, in my soul, in my family, I need to make sure that I personally am saved. Secondly, I not only do I need to make sure the fire is started in my wood stove, I also need to make sure that I stoke the fire. Amen? I can remember my, my grandma getting up. My grandpa would go to work early. And I can remember my grandma getting up. And, and after a long night, she would go in there and she would stoke the fire. If you don't know what stoking the fire means, that means putting more wood into the stove. And she would do that because every once in a while that fire would burn down overnight. And so she'd have to put more wood on the fire so the fire would grow and warm everything else up in the house. But the fire had to be started and you had to stoke the fire. Well, how do we stoke the fire? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. For us to keep the fire going, we must continue to put the spiritual wood, the Word of God, on our fire. I love it. And I, I might just, is it okay if a preacher steals something? I might just steal your idea of having people stand up and say, Scripture, that is awesome. 
Titus, is, uh, Titus uh, knows scripture not because of me, but because of Emily, <laughs> right? We, we, we homeschool him, but our, our association has what they call Christian training services, and we have a competition at the end of the month, and Titus gets to, this is his first year he gets to compete, he's competing in Bible memorization, right? And so he's been learning scripture at that young age. Man, I, I, he knows more scripture than I do, Right? But we need to make sure that we are getting our fill of the Word of God. You see, listen, you're not going to like this, but it's the pastor's job, the Sunday school job, to give you the wood through preaching and teaching of the Word. It is your job to use it and stoke your fire. Amen? I think a lot of times we get those things mixed up. I think a lot of people think that it's the preacher's job to stoke my fire. No, it's not. It's the preacher's job to give it to you. It's your job to use it and apply it to your life. Amen. Kenny's laughing at me because he knows it's true, right? He like, preach it, brother. But are you applying it to your life? Are you doing what, what the Word of God says? Anybody here have horses? I have a horse. It's the stupidest animal in the whole world. No, I'm joking. I like, I like horses, just not mine. But anyways, I can lead that... Right? I, I, I love horses, I really do. But I can lead that horse to water, but guess what? I can't make a drink. I used to think that was an old wise tale until I had a horse. Right? But you can't make a horse drink. It's the same way with people. Brother Kevin can get up here and preach his heart out and preach till he's blue in the face. But until you, his people, get a hold of the Word of God and use it in your life and apply it to your life, don't expect a great revival in this place. Amen? James chapter 1 verse 22 says, But be you doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. In other words, hey church, you need to get to work. Well, that's the preacher's job. We play him a big Sally. Baloney. The preacher's job is to study the word and give you some wood so you can get out and apply it in the world that you live. You can pay me later. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You already did. Never mind. <laughs> But I can stand up here, Brother Kevin can stand up here and give you a truckload of wood, but if you are not going to use it in your life, it ain't going to do you a bit of good. Amen? So how many of you, how many of you like to go eat at a restaurant? All right, some of you are lying. Right now, there's an altar empty that you can come up to. Just how many people participate? I grew up in Waltonville. I don't know big words. Anyways, everybody raise your hand if you like to go eat. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know the word. <laughs> All right, everybody. Now, if I said, hey, let's go out to eat after service tonight, how many of you want to go out and eat? Brother Kevin's buying. It'll be all right, right? Now then, I said, now that is the only meal, though, that you're going to have for an entire week, right? How many of us would be happy? Not even Brother Kevin. And he's the one buying, right? None of us would be happy. What would we be by the end of seven days? What would we be? Very hungry. I have hangry. You know what hangry is? Hungry being angry at the same time. Angry because you're hungry. Right? And have you ever experienced anybody hangry? Right? It's not the most pleasant thing to be around, right? Something else I noticed about if I only had one meal a week, by the time that next meal come around, I'd be pretty weak. W-E-A-K. I'd be weak physically. I'd be drained physically. I'd be tired. I wouldn't feel like doing anything. I'd hope that everybody else would do the chores that I have to do because I wouldn't feel like doing anything because I'm too weak to do it. And I know we're here on a Tuesday night. I understand that. I know who I'm preaching to. But we have a whole lot of people that are okay with only one hour a week and then they wonder why God's not blessing them and they're not being able to do what God wants them to do. Amen. Amen. Listen, you want, your, you want the spiritual fire within you to glow bright? You need to stoke the fire. Get into the Word of God. Not just listen to Brother Kevin preach one time a week, hopefully two or three times a week if you're lucky. I mean, you need to get into the Word of God every single day of the week and find out what God wants for you personally in that day and not just read the words, meditate on the words, pray about the words, and apply the words to you your life wherever you're at whether you're at work or at school or at the doctor's office getting a surgery or coming and teaching at a Sunday school class friend you need to make sure you are getting into the word 
of God. You want revival this week? You must stoke the fire. Another thing I'd see my grandma do when she'd get in, you know, sometimes, every once in a while she'd go in there and she would stir that fire up. Every once in a while, the, the heat wouldn't get it be as hot as she would like, and she'd go over there, and she would open that door to that uh, old wood stove, and she'd have this little poker thing, you know, that had like two little things on the end of it, and she'd get in there, and she'd start poking the embers. Why is that? Because sometimes there's a little bit of heat in the embers underneath, and she would stir that up so a fire would start back up with what was already in there. You see, every once in a while, we have to stir up the embers spiritually so that our fire gets going good, amen? Because let's face it, sometimes we skip a day getting into the Bible. Sometimes we skip a service. Sometimes we skip a revival service. And in that, we need to make sure that we are going back and stirring up the fire. That's why Paul would tell Timothy in verse number 6, 2 Timothy chapter 1 again, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance. Remember, Timothy, remember that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee. He tells him, hey, Timothy, you need to stir up the fire a little bit. Anybody take medicine? I don't know why all the old people raise their hand there and nothing. The older I get, the more pills I end up in my hand before I go to sleep, right? But every once in a while, every once in a while, the doctor, you know, if you have a cold or an allergy or something, they'll, they'll uh, prescribe you some liquid medicine, you know? And on that bottle, it, have you ever seen those words, shake well before use on that bottle? That is because if you put that bottle of medicine up in the shelf and you let it sit for a while that the, the ingredients in that will separate and some of it will settle to the bottle. And so if you're going to take that medicine, you have to pick that medicine up and, and if you just swig it without shaking it, you're going to get some stuff that's probably going to be nasty tasting and you're not going to get everything that you need to cure what is ailing you. And so you have to take that bottle and shake it up to get everything you need in your life. I know a lot of Christians that need a shake well before you stamp right across their forehead, you know, and say, hey, right? God used me, but you have to shake me up, right? And sometimes we need that. That's what revival's for. That's what the altar's for. That's what standing under and sitting under good preaching's for. For you to stir up the fire within you. Why? Because we all need shook up by Almighty God every once in a while. And sometimes we need to make sure that we are stirring up what's within us. You see, so many times as Christians, we have good intentions but whenever we leave revival services even, sometimes we go home and we let what we listen to and the experiences we feel settle to the bottom of our lives and we forget about it so quickly. And we as Christians need to make sure that every day of our lives we are stirring up the Spirit within us by getting into the Word of God, praying to God and saying, God, give me the Spirit of power and of love and a sound mind so that I can be used for your glory wherever you have placed me in your life. You want revival this week? You need to make sure you are letting God stir up the fire within your soul. Amen. Next thing, I would every, every once in a while I'd see Grandma do. Grandma would, our, our wood stove had, a, uh, had a, a, a little tray underneath, you know, and Grandma would pull that tray out and Grandma had a little shovel thing there, you know, and sometimes Grandma would have to get in there, you know, and move the wood out of the way and shovel some ashes out of that stove. And I always wondered why Grandma would shovel those ashes out of the stove because as soon as Grandma would shovel the ashes out of the stove, Grandma would go outside. And every time Grandma would go outside, there would be a good wind come by. You know? <laughs> White as a ghost, you know. <laughs> but every once in a while, Grandma would have to shovel those ashes. Now, Grandma would tell me that that was not always the most pleasant thing to do, shovel the ashes. It was a tedious job. It was an exhausting job sometimes because sometimes there was a lot of ashes in that wood stove to get rid of. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 says, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Listen, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, 
and meat for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Now, what does that mean for me? Well, spiritually seeking, every once in a while, uh, let's face it, sometimes, anybody here perfect? Praise the Lord, you didn't lie. I was going to have to be like, right? right? Even, even I'm not perfect. I know it's hard to believe, but I'm not, you know. It's hard for me to believe sometimes, but, but, but I know I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. But we're not perfect. Sometimes, anybody here ever make a mistake? Amen. Sometimes we make those mistakes, and sometimes we have to get rid of the waste in our life so that we can be used by Almighty God. You see, even though sometimes we don't like shoveling out the ashes, if you don't, the ashes will start to fill up the stove so much so that, that you, you won't have a fire because all the ashes are there where the wood is supposed to be. Right? Sometimes we watch things that we're not supposed to. Sometimes we listen to things we, we're not supposed to. Sometimes we say things we're not supposed to. Anybody have road rage? I confess, my name is Curtis Smith, and I'm a road rage person. Road, did I say that right? I don't even know if I said that right. But I, I, every once in a while, someone, last night, in fact, I left the funeral home last night. I was coming down here, driving down here, and it never fails. As soon as you're wanting to get somewhere in a hurry, guess what? Somebody will pull out and go 40 and a 55, and then there's traffic coming, and then you're like, I want to get to church, God. Come on, get these slow pokes out of the way. I just want to go to church, Right? And then you get here late, and then you have to sit on the front row, and everybody makes fun of you, you know. And, then, and then, you know, and I'll be, I'm joking. Front row is the best seat in the house. Um, amen, amen. Got an amen out of them. All right. But listen, sometimes we have to get rid of the ashes. Some of us need to get rid of the ashes of the world and let more of God's wood, the Word of God, fill our lives. A good friend of mine, his name is C.A. Murray. Uh, I used to work with him at at an Adventist television station. I know it was odd. The free will bat, but brother, brother Randy knows him. And he would tell me this story. The Adventists, you know, uh, they, they go to church on Saturday. And he used to pastor a big church in New York City. I mean, it was a big church. It was like two or 3,000 people would attend his church. And, he's, and they would have services on Sunday, and then they would have prayer meeting on Monday mornings. And he said when he was pastoring there, he said it would be, you know, a lot of the old saints, you know, would be there and meet for, for these prayer meetings and the elders of the church and him and different ones. And, and he said well, it started, you know, one day that, that this young lady, you know, was probably in her late 20s, early 30s, she came in the church, you know, in, into the prayer meeting. And she said, Pastor, uh, I, I want you all to pray for me. She said after service on Saturday, I went to the club that night and, and, and I started doing things that I shouldn't have done. And I, would you guys pray for me that God would, would, would forgive me of that and I, and I could do what God wants me to do the rest of the week? And I was like, oh, yeah, we would love to pray for you, you know. And so they gathered around her and they laid their hands on her and they started praying for her. Oh, please pray for our sister. And sister got up, hallelujah, I feel great, you know. So Saturday come around, they went to church on Saturday. Monday come around, here comes that lady in again. That lady comes in and says, Pastor, I'm sorry, but I messed up at the club again. And I did things I shouldn't have done. And I, would you guys pray for me that God would, would, would heal me of that and get, all, get me over that? And he's like, oh, yeah. And so they prayed for her, you know, and everything. And, and, you know, and so they all gathered around. They prayed for her, and she got up, hallelujah. I can't wait to go this week. I'm filled with re rejuvenated. I thank you guys so much for praying. And he said, the next Monday, same thing. This lady come in, I messed up at the club. Would you guys pray for me? And he said, this went on for like five or six weeks. Every week, this lady was coming in. She'd show up to church on Saturday. Monday morning, she'd come in. And, I messed up. I went to the club. And he said, pretty soon, one of the little old ladies come up, and she had a cane. She came up, and she said, maybe you need to stop going to the club. <laughs> right? Right? Some of us are wondering why God's not blessing us, why God's not using us for His glory, and some of us need to stop going to the club, right? Some of us need to get rid of the junk that's in our life. Some of us need to get rid of, of all of those ashes that weigh us down and fill us up where God's wood should be, where God's spirit should be, where God's power and love and sound mind should be, right? Right? For us to have revival, we need to make sure that we empty out the ashes. Why? Because if I don't empty out the ashes, the ashes will dampen and darken the fire so much that eventually the fire will go out. Ooh. 
Those are scary words. You see, it's important to get the ashes out. We all have words and deeds and lifestyles that leave ashes behind. You see, ashes affect my influence with others. It affects my fire because my fire won't burn as bright as it should. And it affects my relationship with Almighty God. In the Old Testament, whenever they would gather the ashes from all the sacrifices, what would they do with them? They would sacrifice hundreds, sometimes thousands of birds and sheep and goats and lambs and everything else, you know. And what would they do with the ashes? Well, they would gather the ashes and they would take them outside the tabernacle or outside the temple and dispose of them there. What does that mean for me? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 19 says, What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? For you are bought, what? With a price. My voice changed there. Why? Because it's important that we grasp that. Because I'm a girl. No, 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 I'm joking. Uh, because, <laughs> it's funny. I'll go up to McDonald's, you know, and McDonald's, they say, yes, ma'am, how can I help you? I'm like, I'm a guy. Get over it. But anyway, <laughs> but I'm bought with a price. The price I didn't want to pay. The price I cannot pay. But Jesus Christ loved me so much. Never gotten over how much he loves me. My grandma loved me. My mom loved me. Hopefully my wife loves me. <laughs> my kids love me. Right? Man, none of them love me as much as my Jesus. My Jesus. My God who, who supplies all my needs and, and supplies everything that I need to, to live life and be his servants. And, the, and Paul says, you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. But the only way that I'm going to be able to glorify God is if I have wood in my fire and not ashes taking up the space so for me to have real revival I need to make sure I get on my knees before an almighty God and say God forgive me of my sins of my ashes Lord and help me shovel them out the drama team used to do this uh, skit called God's masterpiece I believe was the name of it and it was about this guy that had an encounter with God and God would be there and, uh, and, the, and the guy would say yeah God you know whatever it takes to to get me to where you want me to be, do it. And so God has a chisel and a hammer, and God comes up behind the behind the man, you know, and chisels away, you know, and the guy would go, ow! You know, and pretty soon he'd come over here, and God would say something else, and he'd, he'd hit that chisel again. Ow, the guy would say, what are you doing? And he would say, man, I'm trying to make you like me. But sometimes it takes me chiseling away some things that are hindering and holding you back. And listen, just as the old man, ow, every time God took something away, sometimes, sometimes it's going to hurt. Whenever I got saved, I got saved later in life, and whenever I got saved, the friends I used to have aren't my friends anymore. Not by my choosing, but because they don't want to hang around with me anymore. I'm a holy roller. Praise the Lord I'm a holy roller. Amen. I like it. <laughs> I'm having more fun now than I ever had doing things I shouldn't have done. But man, sometimes it hurts when you see those old friends do things. You go out and party and go hang out with each other and you're not there anymore. But I'm a better man for it today that I'm not with those people. I'm glad I'm in a revival service tonight because whenever I used to work weekends... I used to work weekends. I worked Friday through, through, through Monday, so I wouldn't have to go to church. It gave me a pretty good excuse. I can't go to church because I'm working. And so we would go to the bars on Tuesday night. Man, just the whole thing. I got saved in 2009. 13 years ago, on this Tuesday night, 13 years ago, I'd have been in a bar. But because I was bought with a price... And God's Spirit got a hold of me. Got me to shoveling some ashes. Now I'm able to be His servant. 
able to preach his word that I'm unworthy to preach. But he loved me so much, he said, hey, you're my child, and because you're my child, and because my spirit is within you, you can glorify me, and you can do my work wherever I have called you to do it. But sometimes, for us to have revival, not only in our churches, but revival within our souls, we have to shovel some ashes. And then lastly, aren't you glad it's lastly? Lastly, point number five, the, the preacher last night only had three, three points. I was like, man, I sure hope they aren't I'm expecting three points tonight because there's more. Uh, five, point number five, last point though. I need to make sure my fire stays hot though. Because even if I start a fire and even if I occasionally stoke the fire and every once in a while shovel some ashes out, you know, and every once in a while stir up the embers, if I don't maintain that, the fire will go out. In fact, if you're, even if your fire isn't as hot as it needs to be, if your, hot, if your fire isn't hot enough, the smoke, before it gets out of the chimney, will start to cool down and form soot. And so much soot, if your fire isn't hot enough, that, that soot will form so much that it will eventually close the chimney off and the smoke will back up, right? And so instead of having a bunch of fire, you ain't going to have nothing but a bunch of smoke. Now listen, whenever I was writing this sermon out, I told my people this, and they all laughed at me afterwards. But on Saturday night, it was like 11 o'clock Saturday night before I was going to preach this sermon, I was taking a shower. I know this is a visual that you all wanted right now. But I was taking a shower, and God told me, he spoke to me, and I was like, man, i got to get out. Of the, I got out of the shower. I got, had my phone there. I got out, went on notes, and I typed it in real quick. And then I went ahead and finished up, and I came over to the, to, the, uh, to the computer at my office, and I said, listen, for some of us, listen, people can't see the fire within us for all the smoke we are blowing. Amen? Some of us are blowing a whole lot of smoke and I could go on with that, but I'm not going to. Right? In places it shouldn't go. Amen? In other words, if you don't keep your fire hot enough, people aren't going to know that you're a Christian. If you start acting like the world and doing things like the world and talking like the world and doing things the world does, they aren't going to know if you are a child of God or not. Jesus told his disciples, men, the world will know you are my disciples by how you love one another. And we have people in churches today, and maybe even here tonight. Brother Andy said this a couple weeks ago, whenever he's coming up and preaching at my church, that are sitting across the aisle from one another and can't stand each other. That's not what God has called us or saved us to be. He has saved us to be salt and light in a dark and dying world. We are to be hot with our fire that's within us. People need to see the spiritual fire within you. So for people to see the spiritual fire within you, you must make sure the fire stays hot. That's not Brother Kevin's job. That's not my job. That is your job to keep your fire hot. Well, Brother Curtis, how do I keep my fire hot? Do I have to go through this again? You have to make sure your fire is started. You have to make sure, first of all, that you are a child of God. Brother Curtis, how do I know if I'm a child of God? Do you believe with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul that Jesus is the Son of the living God? You have to believe that He was born in a manger. You have to believe that He lived 33 and a half years of a perfect life as a perfect example of how you are to act in this world. You also have to believe that he died on that cross. Right? They're counting me down. <laughs> uh, you have to believe that he died on a cross. There's a lot of people in the world today that believe Jesus is real. A lot of people in the world believe that Jesus was a good man, that Jesus was a prophet, but they stopped short of calling Jesus the Son of God. A lot of people in the world believe Jesus died on a cross. They believe that he was a good man, a good prophet, who died on the cross between two thieves. But it also takes you believing with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, 
that Jesus rose victoriously from the grave. Amen. Woo! Yeah. You have to believe it. That Jesus not only died, but he rose from the grave. He conquered death, hell, and the grave for you and I. So that whenever, and then he ascended up into heaven. He's alive and able to forgive you of your sins. So that when you come to your senses and you say, wait a minute. I need to make sure that I have fire. A fire within me. I want to make sure that I have eternal life waiting for me. I want to make sure that I'm a child of God. You then come to the altar and say, God, I need to shovel some ashes. Will you forgive me of my sins? And God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness, from all wrongdoing, from all disobedience. And He is able and capable and willing to forgive you of everything. Why? Because He loves you and He wants to see a great work done in you. But sometimes I need to make sure that the fire stays Some of the saddest things I've ever seen is churches that have been on fire that are no longer on fire. And you know what's even worse than that? Seeing a person who used to be on fire for God that has lost the spark. And maybe you're here tonight. Maybe you used to be on fire for God and maybe God has drawn you here for such a time as this so that God can get a hold of you tonight and say, friend, You need to get right. You need to rekindle the fire within you. Maybe God brought you here and maybe you're going through a tough time in your life. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you're struggling with life, with decisions, with sicknesses. Maybe you're struggling with kids. Anybody have kids? (laughs) Maybe you're struggling with parents. Maybe you're struggling with teachers. Maybe you're here tonight and maybe... Maybe God is saying, hey, friend, you need to make sure you're saved. And if that's you, we're going to have a hymn of invitation. If I can have the musicians come up, if you don't care to stand, we're going to pray for you really quick. But maybe you're here tonight, and maybe you need to make sure that fire stays hot. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around, okay? And whenever I say that, I mean it, all right? No one looking around, everybody bow your... I can tell if you're, if you're obeying or not, right? No one looking around. No one's looking around but me and God. And I'm not going to try. I'm not going to trick you. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. But maybe you're here tonight. And maybe you're saying, Brother Curtis, I've never known Jesus as my Savior. And I would love it if Jesus would forgive me of my sins. But I don't have enough courage to come down to an altar. Would you raise your hand that I could pray for you? I'm not going to call you out. But maybe you're here tonight. Maybe you need to raise your hand. Maybe you're here tonight, and maybe you're a Christian, but maybe your fire isn't as hot and as bright as it should be. And maybe you're here and you say, Brother Curtis, would you pray for me that my fire would would, would get hot, as hot as it should? Would you pray for me, Brother Curtis? I have some ashes in my life that need shoveling out so that I can be the child of God that God wants me to be. Is that you? Would you raise your hand? Maybe you're here and saying, Brother Curtis, would you pray for me that I would stoke my fire more, that I, have a more, I would have a more desire every day of my life to get into the Word of God and be used to God. Is that you? Would you raise your hand? All right, you can put your hands down. Let's pray. Lord, we praise you so much, Lord, for all that you do. We thank you so much, Lord, for paying the price, Lord Jesus, that we could not pay on our own. We, pr- we praise you, Lord Jesus, for our service here tonight. We praise you, Lord Jesus, for, for the songs, Lord, and the skits, and, and Lord, the, the word of God, Lord Jesus, that you've given us through your message here tonight. And I pray, God, for these people, Lord Jesus. I pray for the one, Lord Jesus, that has raised their hand, Lord, that does not know you as their personal Savior, God. And I understand, Lord, sometimes... Sometimes it's scary, Lord, and, and sometimes it's, it's discouraging, Lord, to come up. But, Lord, I pray, God, that those thoughts of, of, of discouragement, Lord Jesus, and fear, Lord, that, Lord, you would put those aside because it says in your word, Lord, you've given us the spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. And I pray, God, you would clear their thoughts, Lord, so that they would have the courage, Lord, to come forward and give their life unto you. I also pray, Lord, for the ones that raise their hand, Lord, that need to shovel some ashes that wants to stoke the fire, Lord Jesus, that wants to stir up the embers within them, Lord, that wants to keep their fire hot, Lord. I pray, God, that for those people here tonight, Lord, that are already your children, Lord, I pray that you would draw them to an altar, Lord, 
so that they can get right with you, Lord, so they can get filled up with that wood, Lord, your word and, and your spirit, God, and, Lord, that they would leave this place rejuvenated and on fire to serve you. Lord, we love you and we thank you and we praise you for all that you're doing. And we already praise you in advance, Lord, for what you're going to do during this invitation time and all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Wounded and forsaken I was shattered by the fall Broken and forgotten Feeling lost and all alone Summoned by the King to the master's court lifted by the savior cradled in his arms i was carried to the table seated where i don't Swept away by his love And I don't feel my brokenness anymore When I'm seated at the table of the Lord I was carried to the table Fear, wondering why he called my name. Am I good enough to share this cup? The world has left me lame. And even in my weakness, oh, the Savior called my name. And in his holy presence, I'm healed and unashamed. I was carried to the table seated where I don't belong carried to the table swept away If there's anyone tonight uh, that needs a healing touch, you need a healing touch. Denise has come forth tonight. She wants to be prayed for, uh, for physical ailment. But maybe you're here tonight, and you're saved by the grace of God through faith, but you need to be prayed over for your health. Well, we have some prayer warriors here who love and know the power of prayer. And if you'd like to come forth tonight, you come, all right? I'd like for our elders to come and pray over Denise, but if there's someone else, man, you know, a lot of times, you know, fear, you heard him preach on fear. Fear will keep you from coming. It'll rob you of a lot of blessings. But you know what? There shouldn't be, shouldn't worry because we're the church, and we're here to encourage you and pull for you. So if you have a need tonight, you feel free to come up with Denise and they'll pray over you. Britton, you ready to be baptized tonight? This is your night, isn't it? Praise God. Well, Britton's going to be baptized. And let me tell you about Britton, okay? She's shy, and many of you are shy. And there are certain things I'm shy about, right? And so you wouldn't think that, but there is. But four years ago, she got saved, okay? Professed faith. And always knew she needed to be baptized, going to be baptized. Amen? But tonight, she's going to be baptized. 
It's going to follow through with baptism. Amen? And so you might be one here tonight. You've been saved and you've never been baptized, okay? And you're fighting fear or worry, okay? But if you profess faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to be baptized. It's a command of God. Amen? And you'll have to answer if you're physically able. So, Britton, if you'll come, we're going to go back there and get ready. If there's anybody else wants to come, and uh, you feel free to come back here because we got clothes that fits all. And we got robes, and we got towels. This could be your night. Praise God. Let's cheer Britton on tonight. Some of you preachers and deacons that's here, if you'll anoint her and pray for her, if there's anyone else, okay? But if there's anybody that needs to be baptized, you, you feel it right now. You know God's dealing with you right now, don't you? Isn't it neat how the Spirit of God works? God's talking to you, and you ought to come tonight because this could be your night. Follow through with, with obedience unto God. Amen? Let's come back through here. If you'll cut me off. Get you oily, is that all right? Yeah. Okay. All right. You <laughs> Can I tell you all a story real quick? Is that all right? Yeah. That old, I mean, whenever I was a kid, he was an old guy. He was an old preacher named Floyd Hartley. And he said he was anointing someone one time as a lady, you know, and he anointed her. He rubbed her on her head, you know, and, and her wig came off. Whenever he, oh. So hopefully that don't happen tonight. <laughs> no, I don't have a wig. No, all right. I don't have a wig. You don't have a wig? Everybody's like, I don't have a wig. <laughs> Isn't it good that we can have we we have a good time in the house of the Lord, Amen. Laugh amen. and carry on and everything. Yeah. All right, I'm, I don't know y'all's name, all right, so I'm just gonna. All right, all right, Denise. Denise. All right, I'm going to my sister. Denise. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a spot down there. For, what's all your all name? Sure. I'm going to my sister. No? All right. Let's pray together. Let's put our hands, and if you can't touch them personally, put, touch someone around them, okay? I'm going to put this oil down real quick. Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much, God, for your love and for your mercy, Lord Jesus. Lord, in your Bible, Lord, in your word, it tells us, Lord Jesus, when someone is ailing, Lord, to call the elders together and pray for those that are afflicted, Lord. And we just pray for, for these sisters, Lord Jesus, here tonight, Lord. And, and Lord, I don't know their names very well, Lord, but I know that you know them personally, each and every one of them. And you don't just know their names, Lord. You know what's going on in their life, God. God, you know what's ailing them, Lord, what's touching them, what's afflicting them, Lord. And, and Lord, we know, Lord, that, that you are the great mighty physician, God. And we can put our trust in, in you, Lord Jesus, and our faith in you, God. And, and you promised us, Lord Jesus, that if it's according to your will, that, Lord, that you would answer and hear it and answer our prayers, God. And we just lift up these sisters to you, Lord Jesus, here tonight. And we just pray, God, you just anoint them with your Holy Spirit, each and every one of them, Lord. And, Lord, that you would touch what's going on in their life, Lord. And you'd have your way in their life, Lord. And, and Lord, we pray that we would give you glory for it, Lord Jesus. Whatever it is, Lord, whatever your will is for them, Lord, we pray that they would give you the glory for it. Lord, we love you so much, Lord Jesus. We thank you so much, Lord, for your sacrifice, Lord. We thank you so much for the presence of your Holy Spirit here tonight, God. And we just pray, Lord Jesus, that we as, as your people, Lord, would not forget tonight, Lord, that we would not forget your presence, we not forget your power. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, for the power of anointing of your Holy Spirit upon us here this evening. And we pray for these sisters, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
have what you need But you keep on searching
somebody. Feel it. Feel God dealing with you, man. Hey, uh, she, 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 she showed the way. Amen. All right. No? Nobody? Really? Seriously? None? All right. I'm not going to call you out. I just have to let God deal with you like He deal with me. Amen. Good. Amen. Is there anybody else got prayed for besides Denise? Huh? Was there? All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good, isn't it, man? It's your friend, isn't it? Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Be good now. Curse and get an awesome job. Thank you for the Lord. Girls, you did too, man. Julie, you remind me of a boy in our church, Ricky Hilliard. I hope he's listening. He'll be watching that. He'll be calling me tomorrow. Huh? I had to ask him what school was the other night. I guess you haven't been here. All right. Anybody else? So, you don't want to be baptized. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow night, Lord willing. I'll see you tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, Brother James Garden back there. And he is ready, Simon. He's ready. He is ready. Are you ready? <laughs> Man, we're not finishing. So, I'm not going to tell you goodbye. We'll take off where we left off. Don't let that storm, don't let that keep you from coming to God's house. Come on now. Amen. You got to get here early? Get here early. You think you need to go to the basement? We got one over there. Amen. All right. You got to tell somebody bye before you go. Sometimes life is like a burning desert. And if the years were miles, it would be a million wide. One can get so thirsty For just one drop of mercy And all you find are bones Where someone else has died But God is your Sometimes steal your soul That blazing ball of fire Gets hotter Oh, by the eye That dry hot wind That burns us Is like breathing in a furnace While the sun cooks hot the supper For the buzzers to devour but God is your oasis and where his grace is living water flow and my God is your And I said, God.